the Cold War. It was a time of unmitigated paranoia, unprecedented arms buildup, and nuclear foolishness so wildly unhinged, most wouldn't even believe what we tried to pull off. So I selected absolutely a few bananas ideas, put them in a blender, and well, bottoms up, boys and girls. Welcome back to another episode of A Tanker's View with me, your average tanker, Tony. This week, I apologize for the potato cam and the old school editing software. My normal editing software that I use my VTube avatar on decided to take a shit fit. So while I get that sorted out, you're going to get a couple of different videos. So I decided I wanted to share a couple of absolute bonkers nuclear ideas that almost made their way into our world. While I smashed together another couple of uh, sci-fi videos I know you're all going to absolutely adore and love that you've all been asking for. <clears throat> Predator. But, you know what's not bonkers, boys and girls? Liking, sharing, and subscribing this video. It really does help me in the algorithm. Nuclear weapons. God, the YouTube algorithm just loves nuclear weapons. Jesus, think about that for one second. You have to have some serious hate to not only put in the time, infrastructure, resources, and collective brain power of the smartest people in the whole world to hurl what amounts to a fucking miniature sun at someone. Now, the first nation to achieve this massive feat of fuck you was the USA, obviously. <laughs> Not once, but twice. The mustachioed villain in charge of the USS of Wrong saw that their ideological enemy had the ability to make whole cities disappear in the way that the NKVD would just turn them green with envy. And, well, they thought to themselves, I need to get me some of that. So, four years later, they joined the Sun Chucker Society, followed by the USFB, or Britain, at France, China, etc. down the line. Now, the best part of this whole shit show was that we had no idea what the long-term repercussions were in the beginning. Uh, at one point, guys, we were literally exploding bombs out in the desert and just telling the troops to casually walk on over that to their mushroom cloud. Don't worry, I'm sure the VA told them that their cancer isn't service-related whatsoever. So, that being said, everyone went f***ing hams trying to put nukes into everything they could. For examples, you want a nuke you can just casually throw somewhere behind enemy lines to take out bridges or defenses? Put on a 51 pound backpack and get walking. Trust me, you won't be around long enough to complain to the VA about your knee and joint pain. And why should the Air Force and the combat engineers get all the fun with that? Why shouldn't the Army and the lower enlisted just get all the nukes too? We only gave them like, oh, I don't know, 500 nuclear bazookas. Jesus, think about that. We gave high school graduates at the time not only the actual capacity to start a nuclear war, but to do so driving by at 35 miles per hour. Absolutely fucking nuts. Hey, you want to cook your enemy and have your lunch at the same time? Poultry-powered nuclear landmines. Want to say screw it and just give everything cancer. I give you the nuclear-powered bomb-shitting cruise missile, Project Pluto. You want to put lighthouses all over your coastline, hundreds of miles away from any infrastructure? Just litter your entire landscape with nuclear batteries. That's right, the USS Wrong did that. Hell, we even designed starships that shoot nuclear bombs to propel themselves into intergalactic and interstellar space. We basically tried to nuclearize everything from energy drinks to spaceships. Fuck, the past was wild. <laughs> oh, so from the get-go, you see, if you wanted to make anything nuclear, the two biggest military industrial complexes on Earth will throw untold amounts of money at you to make it happen. Which is why we almost got nuclear freaking tanks. Well, kind of. It's almost a bit of a misnomer. They looked at the idea quite seriously. But, given the possibility of supply lines, and then eventually with more knowledge that we found out, we determined it wasn't really the greatest of ideas, but let's look into it anyway. So, first I'm going to give you the main example of the United States, and then briefly discuss the Soviet attempts, because as far as I can actually determine in my research, they never actually constructed any of their plans. Big f***ing surprise. They only made eventualities to potentially making an addition to existing tanks. So, first up is the land of freedom, milk and honey, the good old US of A, and the Chrysler T8. That's right, the same company that made your Mima's Sunday drive in sedan used to make military hardware and probably still does tangentially today. 
yeah, the military industrial complex is something a little bit wild, isn't it? So the TV-8, I don't even know where to really begin with this. It looks like you asked someone to draw a tank from memory right after giving them a seal treatment from Negan. It looks like someone asked a child to make a tank from Play-Doh and said, perfect, let's go with it. So the most obvious thing about this, where the f is the main war hall? Well, screw convention. We're gonna shove everything and anything into the turret. If this thing ever made it into production, I would have hated to have been the Johnny Go Private who would have had to endure hours of being cramped in this thing, reeking of ball sweat, protein farts, indifference, and failed career aspirations. To boot, all of packing, all of the moving things that would normally be spread across the whole war hall of this thing is now in the turret, and it's a fatal disaster waiting to happen. I've got friends you can ask questions to. Now, not content with just screwing with everything we learned about tanking up to that point, they also wrapped the hull in glass armor to seal everything in nice and tight to make it buoyant. Yes, not content with just putting your crew in a potential metal box filled with all of the cancer we're going to float you have to see as well. The pile of cocaine that Chrysler and the DoD design team were rolling in must have been epic on a scale that would have even given Charlie Sheen pause. God, I love cocaine. Thank the great maker this never made it past prototyping or ever had a nuclear engine installed. I'll explain why in a minute. Now, the most common tank people misattribute to being a Soviet nuclear powered tank is Object 279. It was never actually intended to be a nuclear powered tank, but it was designed to be able to withstand nuclear bombardment within reason. The sweeping curves and the raised hull were direct blast waves around it to avoid being picked up and tossed like a naughty child's toy. Now, this is not to say the Soviets didn't want to make nuclear-powered tanks. There were provisions on paper to try and fit miniature nuclear reactors in the T-62, the T-72, the T-80, and the T-90. Oddly enough, it wasn't common sense that killed this f***ing stupid idea, but it was actually cost and engineering. The cost to build a miniature nuclear reactor is an order of a magnitude over the, of the lifetime cost of a diesel tank engine, including maintenance, fuel, the whole nine yards. And on top of that, a diesel tank engine won't give everyone more than a thousand yards a healthy glow that would make federal agents jealous. Add on to that that nuclear safety and Soviet engineering aren't exactly synonymous, nor is scaling a nuclear reactor. What the world considers to be actually be a miniature nuclear reactor is a submarine nuclear reactor seen here. Now, it takes up a full third of a submarine on an American sub which are like the most advanced on the planet, hands down, bar none. Now, I'll say this before, and I've said it again, I sure ain't no Oxford scholar, but I sure ain't no idiot either. A tank is much smaller than a sub. That's just science. Now, before you start saying to me, there must be other kinds of reactors. Yes, there are many different kinds, but you know what they all share in common? They're all fucking bigger than a tank. That's right, not just the tank engine, the tank. So this would leave other potential options to either super high efficiency RTGs seen here, and which we still cannot manufacture to this day to produce anything better than it's like 3% efficiency, and a gaseous fission reactor, otherwise known as a nuclear rocket. And the RTG is again out of the question because it'll never produce enough power on demand. They're meant to put out a constant amount of power over a long period of time for like say deep, for say deep space probes, <laughs> giggity, and uh, spacecraft of the like, or again, nuclear batteries for lighthouses. And nuclear rocket engines, well, they expel radiation and radioactive waste out its exhaust port harder and faster than an entire frat house on Wednesday morning post beer pong and taco Tuesday. Now that effectively kills everything behind it and then some. That, uh, that's not cash money for the Soviets or anyone, period. Now. Not to mention every nuclear tank destroyed on the battlefield would be a miniature nu like a miniature Chernobyl. And now look how bad they f***ed up dealing with just one Chernobyl. Now imagine dealing with hundreds of those incidents all over the place. Oh, yeah. And they f***ed up more than once with a Chernobyl-sized incident. Just look that up, too. Now, I wish we could say we grew up and decided these weapons were a stupid, terrible idea with no practical value outside the threat of their existence. But sadly, nuclear proliferation is just as bad as ever. Well, we've really toned down what we'll shove a nuke into and try to power it with, limiting it to large ships, subs, spacecraft, and power plants, and rightfully so. Now, nuclear energy, when used properly, 
absolute game changer in energy independence in every way. But I'm really glad our ancestors decided not to yell, hold my beer on this one, because I don't think anyone would have been volunteering to jump into the old cancer coffin on top of all the non-service related injuries you'll get in the army. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can count uh, between my two arse cheeks exactly how many people would want this. Zero. Zero people would want this. Anyways, guys and gals, I'm done ranting on this one. If you like this content, drop me a like and a sub down below, and I will see you on the next one, Legends. Peace.